In this video, we're going to talk a little bit more about limit switches and low water cutoffs. These are two extremely important safety devices in a hydronic heating system. And for low water cutoffs, sometimes you find them in cooling systems as well. Okay, limit switches can either be a safety device, which is our primary purpose, but they can also be operating devices. So keep that in mind about the about where we use them. Most often when a limit switch is a true safety device, it's going to have a manual reset. If the limit switch is also doubling as an operating device, it's going to reset itself. Okay, in other words, every time it clicks, you every time it disconnects something or shuts off, you don't have to go and manually reset it. So just keep that in mind as we go talk about limit switches. Limit switches on heating appliances are basically thermostats that open when an unsafe condition exists in the boiler, such as high water temperatures. We do not ever want water to boil in a boiler unless it's a steam system. So we have to always make sure that the boiler water temperature is under 212 degrees. Okay, and that's Fahrenheit. So when we're in Connecticut, the Connecticut code requires a manual reset high limit switch on all commercial, industrial, and institutional hydronic installations. Now, the Connecticut code is actually duplicated in many other states because it is international building code. So just always check the code for your area and make sure you have the appropriate safeties. This is an example of a manual reset or high limit switch. Okay, it's required in light commercial applications. This one actually straps onto a pipe someplace. The high limit switches have a normally closed contact which will open if the temperature of the system overshoots the set point of the Aquastat's high limit setting. As we discussed earlier, an aquastat is a thermostatic control for water, which controls all of the temperature functions of a hydronic system. A high limit function is to disrupt the heat source if the water temperature exceeds a predetermined point. High limit switches are safety devices and should never be bypassed. The low water cutoff is responsible for de-energizing the burner in the event the water level in the system falls below a desired level. The low water cutoff is a safety device that most code officials require to be installed on all hydronic systems. And I want to change that word from most to all. Okay, you've got to have a low water cutoff. And even if it's not required by code, you want to put one in anyways. This is an example of the low water cutoff. It's usually mounted pretty obvious on a pipe above the boiler or at the top of the boiler, okay? It senses the water and makes sure that there's water in the system. So what is a low water condition? Okay, low water condition occurs when the level of the water within the boiler falls short of a pre-described level by the manufacturer. It can be caused by a number of things, including a leaking pipe, malfunction of the water feed, or simply disrepair of a system. Okay, regardless of the cause, we cannot operate a boiler if the water level is below a certain point in the system. A low water condition places the entire boiler at serious risk. Without the proper amount of boil water in a boiler, it could be unable to properly conduct and transfer the intense heat and energy to which is subjected. The result can be explosions and fire resulting in injuries and extensive property loss. If a boiler actually boils water where it's not designed to be, okay, the boil it flashes to steam and it can actually explode the boiler vessel. And anybody close by, the building and everything can actually blow up. This happens frequently, just accidentally, in a lot of commercial and apartment buildings. Okay, happened much more in like New York City in the early 60s and fi late 50s, okay, before they started putting in low water cutoffs. Now, if a low water condition has happened, okay, and if you come up on a boiler that is hot and empty or a boiler that has cut off on low water, do not just open the water feed valve, okay? You want to allow that, you want to shut it off, you want to allow the boiler to cool. I mean, it got to be cool all the way through. And then you add water. If you add water to a hot boiler, 
okay, it will flash to steam as it comes in, and it will blow that boiler up. And since you're standing right behind it adding water, um, you can either get hurt or you can get seriously hurt or killed. Okay, steam explosions are nothing to mess with. A low water cutoff does two things. First, it accurately detects a low water condition should it occur. Second, it automatically shuts down the combustion operation of the boiler. This will prevent the boiler from firing while its water level is too low to properly manage the heat and energy. Okay, this is an example of a low water cutoff. It screws into a fitting on the boiler. This sensor right here uses an electrical current between the outside and the inside to sense that there's water in the system. Okay, this is another one. Uses water pressure. And you see a wire diagram, okay, comes off the transformer that's furnished with the boiler. You have a red, white, and then you have a yellow that interrupts the power to the aquastat. This is a Taco brand low water, it does the same thing, okay. The whole purpose of this is that it interrupts the power to the burner. It will not allow the burner to fire if there's no water or too little water in the system. And just another one, this is the blue Safeguard brand. And again, always includes the burner circuit. Now this one has an extra alarm switch on it. You can turn on an alarm system on this. So the safeties that we are primarily concerned with in all boilers is both the high limit which sometimes is an operating control as well, and the low water cutoff, which is a safety, then usually a manual reset. It will not allow it to come back on automatically.